All right. Well, good morning and good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's Ask an Expert. I'm Dr. Deirdre Pickerel, and I am the Dean of Student Success at Yorkville University and Toronto Film School. And on behalf of the Student Success Unit, I'm very pleased to welcome you to our session today. Each week at this time, we are very proud to host a community experts on a wide range of topics, all focused on supporting our students during their studies and beyond. Our expert will offer some brief thoughts on the topic of the day, and uh, we will take questions which can be submitted through the Q&A option at the bottom of your Zoom screen. And if you're joining us via Facebook, you can also use the comments there, and we will do our very best to get to everybody's questions. I'm thrilled today to uh, welcome our speaker, Amir Shakri, who has worked at senior management for two global Fortune 100 organizations, managing the full spectrum of human resources management and organization development in Canada and international locations, such as the USA and Europe, and managing teams in India, China, and Africa. Amir holds a master's degree in strategic human resources management from the University of Durham in England. He is a chartered professional in human resources and brings more than 20 years of global business experience at a senior director level to his teaching. Amir is one of our BBA faculty at the British Columbia campus of the university. And again, I'm very thrilled to welcome him today. Amir, over to you. Thank you so much, Didier. Thank you. And good morning, everyone, uh, or good afternoon, wherever you are. And thank you for joining. Um, again, I will not repeat the introduction, but my job uh, for the last 20 more years allowed me to help companies um, find the right person at the right time for the right job and the right organization. And that's really kind of the summary of my presentation today is uh, resumes are very important. So just to kind of a, a disclaimer before we start, my presentation today does not take away from the importance of having a fantastic resume, a fantastic uh, experience and qualifications like being a CPA, uh, or a CPHR or a PMP certification will definitely add to your um, uh, qualifications as, as a candidate. Having good experiences, whether it's volunteer, part-time or full-time experiences, is also very important. Fantastic resume definitely gets you an interview. What I'm talking about to you today is how about understanding the big picture, how human resources manager or, or hiring managers, people that you'll be talking to on the other side of the interviewing table, how do they think and how do they make assessments so that you can actually provide them with better answers? Still be yourself. I will never ask you to change who you are. All I, all I will ask you to do is better present yourself so you have a better chance of finding jobs post-graduation. And again, most of the uh, talk today that I will be presenting are applicable for uh, postgraduate job, like, you know, once, once you graduate with a bachelor degree, uh, have a business degree or other degrees, this would make a lot of sense to use this approach that I'm going to share to you today. So I think we have a chat box. So please uh, feel free to engage with me, stop me, interrupt me uh, as I go, because uh, I want this to be as interactive uh, as, pos as possible. So uh, the topic is how can you present yourself in a job search process or an interviewing process that you actually fit in the organization? Uh, the reason I'm, I'm talking about this is uh, many uh, of my mentees, I mentored several students uh, in Vancouver and outside Vancouver, they come to me sometimes frustrated when they don't get a job offer because they said I've done everything. I had a fantastic resume. I actually met every single requirement of the job. I, I had an interview, actually had a couple of interviews. I still did not get the job. So after talking to uh, you know several of them and probing what happened in interviews, I realized they almost exclusively focus on themselves and their qualifications and experiences and how they fit a job, the job that is posted. While I know from experience, from hands-on experience, the hiring manager or the HR manager on the other side of the table, from the interviewing table, are thinking bigger than this. Can they actually fit with our team? Can they fit with the manager they're going to be reporting to? Can they fit with the total organization culture? Can they fit actually with our products? And I will give you examples. Can they fit with our industry? Can they fit with our clients? So there are other questions that they might not even share in the interview, but they will be thinking about. So today's um, kind of tips that I will give to you is how can you address that? So, um, so this would be my simple one topic agenda for today. So I have only one topic, which is going to give you tips and recommendations on how to use the organizational fit. How can you present yourself to your interviewees and potential employers as you actually can fit in the whole organization, not just one job, 
which will hopefully uh, increase a potential for uh, getting the job. I uh, also include uh, lots of articles and other further readings in the uh, presentation because I think we will just limit ourselves to 10 or 12 minutes in this presentation, but I want you to read further, take it more and take the next step and read on your own. Okay, so I'll just do a quick uh, exercise with you here. Let's imagine we are all for, you know, 60 seconds, we are all HR managers. We're going to hire one of these two candidates. So we are the HR managers of a uh, fake, you know, fact, you know, a fictional university called Vancouverville University. And uh, just by coincidence, it's the same size and same environment like Yorkville University, just a coincidence. And we are hiring a receptionist, okay? So uh, for those of you guys who, come to, who came to campus over the last year or two, so you know our new campus in US Minister and even before that uh, in downtown, so you know the environment, you know the culture. So we have two applicants, two finalists who are coming to the final interview. We have candidate A, she has a bachelor degree from UBC University uh, with honors, so that's fantastic degree, executive as administrative assistance diploma, I, another qualification, 11 years of experience. However, some of the comments we heard uh, in the, inter the first interview was, I had a hard time understanding some of the clients over the phone, they had very heavy accent and that was very, very stressful and I didn't like it. Second one was, oh, the reception area was too noisy. I sometimes just used my, ear, my headphones or earphones to listen to music to disconnect uh, from people around me. Uh, and then the last one, I really just want a clear job description. I want to know exactly what I'd be doing every single minute of the day. So that's candidate A, fantastic qualifications and experience. Candidate B, a uh, bachelor degree from uh, so, uh, of communications from BCIT, no uh, other diplomas, uh, six years of experience. So a little bit less experience there. Some of the comments we heard in, um, uh, in the interview is she really enjoyed different types of customers and diverse. She loved the different styles. People have different needs. Every day is different, different accents, styles, cultures, celebrating different uh, holidays around, around the world. Everybody coming in with different uh, perspectives. She, that, she said, this is exciting. And the second one is she loved engaging and interacting with clients, especially in the lunch breaks when everybody is surrounding her and putting her under siege on and her desk on the reception area, but she loved this. She get to know each other and uh, other people and, and get to interact with them. And then uh, last thing she said is uh, while she understands, she needs to understand the core responsibility of the job, she realizes, you know, she has to be flexible and uh, adapt to the needs of customers and companies. Okay, so that's a quick overview of the two candidates. Uh, you are now gonna see, hold on one second. So you're going to see now on the screen a poll. If you are the HR manager for the fictional Vancouverville University, uh, which candidate you will choose, candidate A or candidate B? And it's free. You, can, you guys can choose whoever you want. No pressure. Everybody, it's a big pressure. You are the HR manager for this university. Yeah, and obviously, I will look at the chat box as well. Oh, wow. Okay. So I will just end the poll now, but as you can, I, I think you can see the results um, or maybe I have to click end. So I'll just write it down. So candidate B got two votes on the chat box in the chat box plus 94%, 51 votes in the poll and candidate A only got five votes, which is 9%. And I have now one more so it's a, it's a clear majority, 95% versus 5%, including, uh, including the three votes in, in a chat box. So I will tell you now what you have just done uh, because, oh, I can share the results actually. Yeah, so now you can see the results. So 95% candidate B, that's not including the chat box. So it's more than 95%. So enough with that. So basically what you guys have done is you let go of a UBC graduate with honor. This is what you have done. 11 years of experience and uh, an executive administrative assistant diploma. This, this candidate is perfect. Versus you got somebody who has a degree from BCIT, no diploma and five years of experience less. So what you have done is you really saved me time and you finished the presentation. You did what we call organizational fit. So you looked at, oh my God, this is a Vancouverville University is an upbeat university, very diverse, lots of international students. We need somebody who will be hands-on, adaptive, smiley, 
engaging, entertaining, you know, doing multiple things at the same time, sometimes crazy things at the same time. So this is the culture you were looking for. So without really getting any training, I give you credit, hats off, you have done what professional hiring managers and HR managers have done. Qualification, again, don't get me wrong, I will never, ever discount a good resume, good qualifications, uh, like PMP and, you know, the, the diploma from BCC and so on, fantastic stuff. But if you don't fit with the job, the requirements of the job, the culture, the clients, the organization, you will end up probably leaving uh, the organization or, you know, being failure in the job. So this is the concept, and I hope you can see um, this puzzle. It shows that the best way to choose for a, a job is to make sure that there is not only a, a person task fit. Yes, you obviously have to be qualified. You have to have the proper qualifications to do the job. If I'm hiring an accountant, I want to see some sort of a economics, accounting, finance degree, hopefully a CPA. That's absolutely important. But the person has to fit also in the total organization. So again, for your further reading, you can see that an individual coming to an interview is a mix of values, expectations, abilities, interests, knowledge, skills. And that's why I share with you the comments from candidate A and B, because that's part of them. It is not only the degree and resume, it's really what they provide to the organization. At the same time, the organization is just not a, an addition of jobs. You cannot say Google or Microsoft or, um, or Air Canada is just an addition of 40,000 jobs. It doesn't work that way. There is a culture, there is a structure, there is a reward system, there's a strategy, objectives, management, values. So that, that keeps all those jobs together. So again, companies are now, you know, have been doing this actually for several years, moving from a personal task fit to a personal organization fit. And unfortunately, many people don't get this kind of education in high school or in during the university time. And they tend to focus on, oh, I fit the task, I fit the task and go there to the interview very focused and not their fault, but probably they miss a big information that actually hiring managers are looking for more than this. And you guys have proved it. 95% of you hired a less qualified person, but will definitely fit with the culture. So here is a kind of a visual uh, that will help you uh, kind of understand what I'm trying to say here is you have to fit with the job, the organization as a person, and this will lead to obviously more productivity, commitment, satisfaction. Because let's say we, we said, no, we cannot let go of this candidate A. It's too good to be true. Let's hire the person. It's fantastic qualifications. After one week, you know, you know, he or she will be putting the headphones on their head, disconnected during, you know, breaks. They don't want to talk to people anymore. Too many accents for them. It's just going to be an awful experience. So for everyone, not just for her um, so, uh, or him. So that's why a fit is very important with Overall, it, it helps with the work attitude, satisfaction with the job, turnover, less turnover, obviously, because you are excited about the job and job performance itself. So it's actually a win-win. So job fit is really a good, it's almost, you can use the word matching, like we use it for relationships. So a fit really helps long-term relationship between the, the candidate, the individual, and the company. I will not spend too much time on this because I want to, I want to go to the tips quickly, but just for you to know, organizations have cultures. And whenever you get the organizational behavior course, you will learn about those different cultures. Some, culture, some companies are very creative. Others are very disciplined, like production companies versus Apple and Samsung, very creative. And they look for specific cultures. And they actually have some measuring tools during interviews and assessments. So you can read my slides afterwards and ask me questions. I just want to let you know that this is actually existing. So here is an example. So again, just similar to the uh, Vancouverville University exercise, a large company hiring an accountant, one accountant in a team of 10 accountants, they will be looking for something very different versus on the right-hand side, a small organization hiring an accountant, same experience, same qualifications, but this accountant would be the only accountant in the whole company reporting to a very busy CEO who is always traveling. So same job, same qualifications, probably on, on deed.ca, you will find this, it's copy and paste. People sometimes, you know, companies sometimes are lazy, just copy and paste job descriptions. So you will find the same job description, uh, but the requirements will be this, uh, different. So for the large company, they will be looking for teamwork, fast learners, collaboration, share ideas with the team, good communicator. On the other hand, because this person would be the only person, we need a lot of autonomy, being self-starter, self-learner, independent and assertive. So as you can see, same job. Same everything on, the, on, on indeed.ca, but in the interviews, in the job, they will be looking for something different. And that's why some 
you know, candidates can be confused. Why didn't I get the job? Because what you presented in the interview is very different from what they were looking for. Or the other way around, you presented what they're looking for, and then you get it. Um, so yeah, so I, I think you guys are going to get uh, the, the, the presentations, don't worry. So here is a visual of what really happens in, uh, in, in interviews. And, and trust me, because I was on the other side of the table for 20 years, you know, hired hundreds of people. Uh, everyone in a panel interview, this is what is called a panel interview. Uh, everyone is, is thinking about something different. So as you can see, the candidate is thinking about, will, my, will they like my resume, my qualifications? Am I fit with the job? Which is, by the way, very important question. All I'm saying is it's not enough because the hiring managers are thinking about, can they work with the team? Can they work with me, the hiring manager? Can they fit with customers? Can they fit with the culture? Can they fit with our products or with our environment? So here is really, you, you're now moving. I want your mindset, really the key outcome from this presentation is move your mindset from, I have to fit with job requirements to fit with the job requirements and Make sure that I fit with the customer, manager, team, organization, culture, and so on. I'll give you a few examples while we're at it. Uh, I, I helped IB, uh, BMW dealerships in Vancouver to hire some top quality uh, sales reps, uh, sales representatives to sell BMW cars. So I was sitting in interviews just trying to see what's happening. So I saw one leader, you know, giving away, you know, letting very good candidates go without hiring them. So I said, come on, this guy is fantastic, that sold thousands of cars over the years he said yeah but he is not a luxury brand sales representative he cannot relate with our luxury brand customers so yes good sales representative but you know maybe selling different products so oh the, uh, you were thinking about customers not just the job requirements another example um when we were hiring sales representatives for the pharmaceutical industry we wanted to make sure that people are not just selling 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 to get the incentive and commission like maybe other industries, there are a lot of ethical codes, you know, regulations they have to follow because you are selling medication. So you want to make sure that you are actually following a lot of guidelines. Some sales representatives coming from specific industries don't have the tendency to follow those regulations. They just want the commission, which is which is fine. But then their place is in another industry. So that's an example of not fitting with a highly regulated industry. Final example is a personal one. I really close to my heart is um, uh, Kushbo. Kushbo was an, um, a graduate from UBC a few years ago, was one of my mentees, came for an interview uh, with my company downtown Vancouver. She was, you know, at that time, super shy, not a good presenter, a uh, very heavy accent. Uh, in the short list, she was probably the lowest, but she came to the second round, you know, competing with MBAs from top universities in Canada. But, oh boy, she, what she did is amazing. She, because she, we asked for somebody who would take a new software application and launch it. And we told them in the first interview, we are super busy. We don't have time for, you know, you're going to do it on your own. So what she showed us that she is a self-starter, independent, she can do it on her own and and she did, and actually we offered her a job to be like the, the head of our branch in, in India. So, so anyway, uh, so this is just an example that we are looking beyond the, um, the job requirements. So I'll be very fast now. This is kind of the uh, wrap up. So you, what you need to do is now before you go to an interview or an interaction, you have to uh, research uh, the company before it make, make sure that you understand their customer, their industry, their products, uh, as much as you can from the culture and the industry. Uh, be specific about what you, how you are a good fit, not only with the job, with everything else, and emphasize how you can contribute to the success of the whole organization, including customers, clients, you know, environment, culture, products, and so on. Um, so here is a, a tip that I would like you to read after the presentation, and you can ask me questions whenever you want. Is when you asked when you are when the, you are asked in an interview, why do you want to work here? Try to flip the answer. <clears throat> sorry, flip the question to. Why do you want me to hire me? So the question you will hear, and you, you know, they will obviously be very polite. They will ask you, why do you want to work here? But the question you need to hear, translate this in your mind is, why would this company want to hire me? And this will automatically broaden your scope in terms of answering, how can I help the company succeed? How can my past career successes contribute to the success of the organization? And how can I complement the company culture? And by the way, uh, I would just answer uh, one of the common questions I always get. What if they don't ask me about this? Well, you will always get a chance to ask questions at the end. And this is where you say, tell me about the priorities of the company. How can I, you know, what are the biggest worry of the company? Then you can, at the end, end with your closing comments, 
here is how I can help you with this. If this is your big concerns uh, in the company, here is my experiences and skills that can help you succeed and address those concerns. And with that, I will end Adrian back to you. Great, thank you so much, Amir. That was fantastic. It really um, speaks to the importance, I think, of, of doing what, what in my work I've called the culture audit. You know, as you're as as students are, are looking for work, is to get that sense of, of what is in the company's DNA so that you can then present all of your materials, your resume, your cover letter. Um, and when you're having those first initial interviews or, or communications with the hiring manager, that you're, you're starting to make the case for why you are a, a good fit. And I also think it works both ways. Absolutely. <laughs> during that culture audit, you're figuring out whether this is a good fit for you as the candidate. And if the answer is, this doesn't feel like a good fit for me, that's the time to walk away, really, isn't it? It is. It's a win-win. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So I, we, we do, we have, we've had some questions come in through the chat, mostly around, can I get the PowerPoint and, and those sorts of things. So what I've told um, everybody watching is that we're, we're streaming live. So there will be a YouTube link. I don't know how to access it. So we'll have to figure that out. But we, Yorkville and Toronto Film School, we're, we're doing so many of these sessions and there will be a library of content that will be available. So if you're one of our students, please watch your school emails. And, and when the library is launched, you'll be able to access all this recording and all of the other Ask an Expert sessions. And of course, any PowerPoints will be embedded in that. You can pause them, you can listen again. And, and that's how, how we're sharing the PowerPoints. Um, but the first question that's come in, and, and again, please use the Q&A panel, everyone, if you're uh, with us via Zoom. And um, I'm going to send these questions to Amir. We'll, get, we'll cover as many as I can. So the first question is, uh, let's suppose we have two employers, one which has a lot of knowledge about how to run a business well. But uh, on the other hand, we have a person who has better skills and creative and innovations. So which one do, should we choose? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And instead of answering this one particular case, I would give you the general formula and then it's up to you really to decide. Uh, you should have an end game in your mind. Uh, and then uh, this end game, let's say uh, you're going to graduate from, you know, your university with a supply chain uh, specialization and you want to be a supply chain manager in a big company, let's say in Amazon. So this is your end game, senior manager in Amazon. What kind of steps and experiences uh, you need to get to this job? and then assess those two companies based on your career. If one of them is clearly gonna give you uh, the qualifications and experiences that will help you land your, your you know, uh, end dream, then definitely this is the one you get. Uh, personally, I always vote for education early on in the career. I always you know, tell my mentees, money and promotions will come eventually. Just focus on the learning and the experiences you need maybe in the first one or two jobs definitely the first one or two years in your career because you are building the foundation then maybe balance it off with obviously we all have financial needs and you need to get more money and promotions but i would always vote for which one will help you get further in your career towards your end goal because some some jobs would be fantastic but will take you completely derailed away from what you want to do right great thanks so much okay right on to the next question uh, in these uh, days of job searching, depending on the job, of course, is it a reasonable idea to bring evidence such as pictures, samples, those sorts of things to an interview? Absolutely. But it has to make sense and add value to the discussion. So I actually liked uh, a lot of candidates who bring in, for example, uh, an application that they have created or a, a map that they've created for the manufacturing site, but something that adds value as opposed to something that I can actually download from the internet. Uh, so yes, if it adds value, it shows that you can do something, uh, absolutely, uh, as long as you are not overselling or showing something very generic that anybody else can do. But yeah. Right. Absolutely. So it should set you apart as a candidate. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and add value to the discussion, not just showing something, you know, just for the sake of it. Right. Great. Okay. Um, so another question, how do I set myself apart competitively when applying for an internal application? So in this instance, the person is on a contract, so doing the job currently and applying for the full-time position. What advice do you have? Oh, uh, first of all, I just want to let you know, you will be in a very, very strong position. So definitely have to leverage this. The best candidates are the internal candidates. And I want to give tell you, HR managers and hiring managers, they love internal candidates. Why? Because 
all the risk is taken away. We know the person, we have met the person, we know their behavior. So if you have done well, you are almost 50% there. So what you need to do is what I call the smart pill. The smart pill is a very simple technique. Write it down and do it the rest of your life. Smart pill is when you have coffee, lunches, breakfast with key people in the company, ask them questions. What do you do in this department? Be curious. So the more you ask questions and uh, you know get information, and then you can actually set up a, a, a friendly one-on-one -on -one with the hiring manager, present yourself, and ask them, you know, this is what I want to do, and I'm going to be applying for the job. So once you are into inside, you have a big leverage, and you have to use it appropriately, of course. But I can tell you, HR managers and hiring managers, they love internal candidates because they know what they are getting. All you need to do is improve your information. Don't be relaxed. Be curious. Ask questions. Show people you are hungry including, for example, volunteering to maybe work in this department, uh, you know, job shadowing. This is always a good opportunity. Job shadowing means that you ask the manager, can I just sit down for a couple of hours, see what people are doing, because I'm really very curious and very interested in this job. These, these techniques, the smart pill, the, the coffees and lunches and breaks, uh, the job shadowing, talking to the manager, uh, obviously will take you a long way. Great. Okay, another one. We're just going to keep going. Um, so this is a student that I, I'm going to assume is in our Masters of Arts and Counseling Psychology program. So it's just wondering if these techniques that you've spoken about today um, work for seeking out a practicum. Uh, actually, yes. Uh, it, it actually, it's, it's very generic because organization fit can fit with a small auditing company with a big manufacturing company. It fits with anywhere. If anybody is making judgment on your application, they are thinking in the same way. Can you fit? With this organic, whether it's a clinic of three people or whether it's a manufacturing site of 5,000 people, it's the same methodology. Right. So, really, it's uh, this applies whether they're applying for a practicum or applying. It, whether it's an in, uh, interim uh, job or a practicum or a, 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 a yeah, internal job or small company or a big company, it, it's the same mindset. Actually, I would argue the smaller the, the, the kind of the organization, the more important the organizational fit is. They actually, they are very keen on, because it's a small team, they want to make sure that they, what they are hiring, somebody who's going to fit. So practicums obviously will also, uh, yeah, yeah, will follow the same model. Because when you, when you hire for those jobs, you are also thinking about the long term as well. What if, you know, this person can come long term as well? If I understand the process well. Okay, can you hear me? Sorry, I kind of lost you. Okay, I have, um, yeah, so, uh, <clears throat> so, uh, the, so the person, the job about the practicum, yes, uh, absolutely, you can, um, it's the same, seeking a job or a practicum, it's the same, every single interview is the same process, so please do that, uh, pretend to make a career change. Yeah, for, so for the uh, for the job, um, you know, until we, we get Deidre back, for the next question about um, changing careers from event management to graphic design, um, you actually have to maybe um, uh, do a little bit more. I have seen people doing, for example, uh, like some free uh, work to companies to just to get their portfolio going, uh, doing some small gigs or some part-time uh, jobs. Uh, also using the network, using the LinkedIn profile to offer uh, their services. So when you do a career change, it will maybe take a little bit of time to kind of uh, have a take, um, take off. So don't lose uh, hope and then be passionate. What, what you just need to do is, as I said, use your, your LinkedIn network, expand your LinkedIn network, use this time to have more people connected to you. Always post what you, the outcome your, or your portfolio of graphic design on your LinkedIn profile. And as I said, maybe I have seen this a couple of people doing one or two free jobs uh, to maybe organizations that you know, including even the university that you graduated from uh, to show your, uh, your product. Yeah, so I answered the next question, Deidre, so we can move on. So the one about uh, the career change. Okay, that's great. I, I've never had that happen before, but I got that's put okay. it out of Zoom. <laughs> 
Thanks so much, Amir. I'm so glad you don't actually really need me. <laughs> <laughs> now we need you. That's it's a, it's, a, it's a teamwork. It's a teamwork. It's teamwork. Um, so I think we probably have time for just one last question. And the one I can see that I'm hoping you haven't answered is what advice that you might have for um, how to do this kind of research? You know, that some students are, you know, they look at the company's website, but is that actually enough to, to really get a good sense of, of fit within the organization? Well, uh, actually, uh, uh, this question I received probably 10 years ago, and it was very difficult to answer. But right now, I can see the answer is completely different from 10 years. Now you have tons of information on uh, the internet. But with that in mind, you have to also do more work in terms of filtering. So uh, so when you before you join a company, you have Glassdoors, glassdoor.com, where lots of uh, employees put feedback there. However, you have to realize some people, are, some employees might be very angry for some specific reason and they have a very negative feedback. So you read and take the whole picture, not one by one. So Glassdoor, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, general information from Google, also the, the financial report from the organization. Uh, most uh, medium sized to big companies have what we call an annual financial report, and they actually have a lot of information about themselves, but that's a kind of a regulatory requirement for tax reasons. Uh, and obviously the website, ideally, if you're, uh, you can connect with somebody in the company, have a quick chat. Uh, actually, I have seen very generous people who would accept your invitation to a coffee and, uh, and talk about the company. This is always very helpful. However, the best research ever you can do, if you can get through Glassdoor and LinkedIn and connections and coffee with somebody in the company, is during the interview, and I will, I will teach you this right now. At the end, when they say, do you have any questions? If you feel you, are, you still did not present yourself as you want, because I, I will never ask you to change yourself, be authentic, be yourself. All I'm asking is how to better present yourself. Ask a question that will lead to you getting an opportunity to know more. So for example, why this job is vacant? Uh, so you know, why are you posting this job? Is somebody retiring, somebody being terminated? Uh, so if they say, yeah, somebody was there and leaving. So do you have new expectations for the job? Uh, what else do you need? You know, were the clients happy with what you, so just ask about all the components you have seen on my puzzle. Ask about clients, products, services, culture. Actually, this will give the interviewee sorry, the interviewer, uh, an idea that actually you are, you have the big picture in mind, you are really interested and really trying to find information. After they finish, you can, you know, kind of give your final, uh, you know, uh, speech or final pitch saying, based on what you have said, I think I am a good fit and so on. So, but do the research before you go. If you can't, you always have a better chance in the interview to ask those questions. And more often than not, the hiring managers and the interviewers will be willing to give you this information. You just have to use it quickly. You have to think on your feet and, you know, send it back to them with, I fit this organization or not. Like Deidre yeah. said, it has to be a win-win. Yeah, I think it's, that's probably a really good place to, to end, Amir. I'm obviously, I'm conscious of time, but it's what really comes up for me there with what you've talked about is how so many people spend um, an incredible amount of time practicing for the interview questions that they are going to get and don't spend near enough time practicing or thinking intently about the questions they want to ask exactly and that is really the opportunity to learn so much about the role of the team the, the, and the overall culture of the organization. So if we could leave with anything, it's that importance of using those questions really wisely in an interview to get a sense of, of what the position is like. Amir, this has been brilliant. I apologize for my little technical hiccup. No, but this that's has okay. been an, an absolutely uh, great session. Thank you so much for giving your time to us this morning and, and really okay. talking to students about the importance of this notion of, of organization and culture fit and paying attention to how they fit into the organization, the individual role, but also the, the much bigger picture that every organization in, is thinking about. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, don't forget that we'll be back at the same time next week for Ask an Expert. I didn't quite check, but I'm pretty sure we're looking at how to make our spaces um, more friendly now that we're all working from home with one of our instructors from the Bachelors of Interior Design program. So with that, again, thank you to all. I wish you all the best for the rest of your Friday and have a fantastic weekend. And Amir, again, it was great to see you. Thanks so much. A pleasure to have. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.